Welcome to Idea of Virtual Education. In this video, we're going to talk about the different ways and options you have when adding instances to SQL Diagnostic Manager. Now, there's two different ways to do this. Uh, what we're going to show you first is how to mainly add instances to the GUI. But you can also add instances through PowerShell, and I'll pull up a screen in a minute that shows you the different options for um, not only what you can do when adding instances to Diagnostic Manager through PowerShell, but things that you can modify um, in Diagnostic Manager related to the instances that have already been added. So if you're a brand new customer and you haven't added instances to DM yet, it's pretty easy. The splash screen that opens up the first time you install the console, it'll ask you to add instances. If you've already gone past that screen to add new ones, you can just right click on all servers, manage SQL server, and it will bring up a wizard that first off shows you which instances are there already. But then at the bottom, you can say add. Now, um, the first question it really talks about is how are we going to connect to the SQL servers in question? Windows authentication is really referring to the account that is running the SQL DM collection service. So when you did the install, it would have asked you to specify an account to run that service as. Um, and in that case, it would be that same account. Now, if you're working in a non-trusted environment, trying to monitor an instance that maybe is in a different domain or doesn't use Windows authentication, you can certainly use SQL Server authentication to do that. And then you have the option to encrypt the connection from Diagnostic Manager collection service to the instances being uh, monitored as well. You may do that if you're going um, across the WAN to do monitoring, but generally speaking, if you're inside a firewall, I don't think that that's a primary option that most of our customers use. Now, the next page is actually where we'll identify instances. As you can see here, one of the servers in my environment is already in a list. So it's gonna use the browser service to discover any instances in the environment that are obviously discoverable. If you don't see anything in there, it's not always surprising. Uh, sometimes, you know, we just can't find those SQL servers uh, very quickly in Diagnostic Manager. In that case, you can always type in uh, any instance name that you wish. Now, if you notice, it says type semicolon, se uh, type semicolon separated names. Um, so what I could say is like SQL 1, semicolon, SQL 2, semicolon, SQL 3. And, and that's just going to push down as individual instances, right? So if you already have a list of what you want to monitor, as long as that's comma separated, you can paste it in there and it's going to know that pretty quickly. Let me remove these real fast. So we're going to add this dev3 box. Now, the next step is helping us understand what type of SQL Server it is that you're going to monitor. This one happens to be an on-prem virtual machine, really simple. But if you were doing something like RDS or Azure, uh, even Linux for that matter, you would want to tell us um, what that is. Now, notice this says RDS. If you're talking about monitoring a virtual machine that's out in the cloud, be that in Azure or Amazon or any other you know, hosting provider that, that you may be leveraging, you don't have to indicate anything other than Windows, right? So if it's in the cloud and it's running on a machine that is you know, your virtual machine with your SQL Server instance on it, we would treat that as if it was on-prem. But if you are doing something a little bit different, like RDS or Azure database, you know, database as a service versus a virtual machine running in Microsoft Data Center, then you would want to indicate that. Same with Linux. Um, the reason why is there are different things that we collect in those environments, and there are things that we don't collect, right? Or that we do collect and we don't collect, right? So WMI, for example, is not going to work on a Linux environment. So you do want to let us know what type of system it is. And then um, we'll talk about collection intervals and query monitoring. Now, polling intervals, generally speaking, the default is six minutes. That's what you'll see here. What that's talking about is how often we go out and we gather the OS level and the SQL level performance data. Um, most environments, I think six minutes makes sense. In some environments, though, it doesn't, right? So if you have servers that are um, high visibility servers that are having a lot of issues and you want more resolution into what's happening in those SQL servers, you may drop that down to, you know, one, two minutes. In other environments that are running perfectly normal and you're really looking at Diagnostic Manager more for long-term trending analysis, capacity planning, general alerting, maybe 15, 20 minutes is appropriate. Um, I think the max number here is 30 minutes and the lowest number, it can be below one minute, but I don't think most of our customers are going to go below a minute. And part of the reason for that is there's other features like query monitoring and activity monitoring 
that can help fill in those gaps between the polling intervals. For example, query monitoring here, and you have some different ways to do this, but the idea of query monitoring is to basically capture and let Diagnostic Manager know about any poor performing SQL that's running between the polling intervals. Most of the time that's done through extended events or query store, um, depending on the version of SQL that you're monitoring. On older versions of SQL, 2000, 2005, for example, we would be leveraging a server-side trace. But for the new versions of SQL 2008 and above, you can use extended events 2016 and above, you can use query store. I think those would be a preferable option than the server side trace. Now, you also can define down below what your considerations are for poor performing, right? So the default is anything over five seconds in duration. You could have parameters around IO or CPU that you wanna look at as well. And you can go into the advanced functionality here and include or exclude um, applications, databases, or texts that maybe is irrelevant or exclusively relevant to your concept of query monitoring. So again, query monitoring really does help you better understand what your polling interval is. And, and the reason why I say that is at six minutes, you may not see every query in that six minute polling interval, but any query over five seconds is being picked up in a different collector, uh, the query monitor collector, therefore you'll have a record of it regardless of when your polling interval fires. So um, it may be, and honestly, uh, if you, I'm adding 20 instances, maybe I don't go ahead and enable this out of the box, um, but again, maybe you do. So this is an optional step. You do have the ability to turn on query monitoring after this uh, manually. You can also trigger it by the way through alerting. So there is some flexibility on enabling this after you've actually added the instance to the server, uh, to Diagnostic Manager, excuse me. So the next thing that we're looking at, and this is for on-prem or virtual machines running SQL and Windows. Um, we are going to be collecting OS level performance data through WMI. And uh, by default, at least, generally speaking, what we do again is leverage the SQL DM collection service account to do that WMI monitoring. You don't have to do that. So you could put in, you know, domain slash username that you want to use for that WMI collection. In some environments, though, where there's a firewall between the collection service, the DM collection service, and the instance that you're going to monitor that is preventing WMI data coming through the firewall, you could opt for the middle option here, which is to leverage OLE automation. Um, OLE automation is a set of, uh, it's a setting within SQL Server. So it's still procedures that can be enabled within SQL Server that basically allow SQL to access OS level data like WMI. So we would leverage that in those firewall consideration environments so that the data comes, the WMI data comes directly to the Diagnostic Manager Collection Service through the SQL Server port. So you don't have to have any other ports open other than, you know, 1433 or whatever you run SQL Server on. So that's an option for firewall bound uh, environments. And then not that we would recommend this, but you don't have to collect OS level performance data. So if, you, if you're just not interested in, you know, OS level CPU and disk and memory, then, then you don't have to turn that on. But the default generally works for most environments. Um, I would go ahead and, and try this at least. If it doesn't work, you can always change it on an individual instance by instance basis as needed. And then the last big piece of this ad wizard is talking about alert templates as well as tags. Now, alert templates, the idea here is what is your threshold for what is good and bad per metric? And out of the box, there are some different templates that you can work, critical only, performance templates, things like that, that you can work for, from. You can also create your own. Um, but if you're a brand new customer, you're probably not gonna have templates other than the default. So you can pick and choose which ones you want. So critical only, I think is good for your, your baseline kind of initial proof of concept. Um, and you can always ramp up those, those uh, you know, the detail of your, your metrics later on. But I think critical only is a good starting point for most environments. And then the other important piece of this, this screen is talking about tagging. Tagging is basically logical groups. So if you look over here in my environment, there's Austin, development, production, SharePoint. These are different groups of instances that I can leverage when doing things like maintenance mode, alert templates, alert responses, security, reporting. Um, so 
the tags themselves can simplify management over time. And you can create them. Obviously, you won't have them if you're a brand new customer, but you can create as many tags as you wish. And it's also important to understand that these are non-exclusive. So, you know, Prod1, for example, could be in Austin and in production and in SharePoint. So it could be a member of three different tags um, if that's required. So creating tags may not be something you do initially in your initial POC, but over time, it is something that you'll want to uh, ultimately incorporate into your monitoring because it will simplify management. And then lastly, when you hit finish, it will ask you to test. And, and generally what you're looking for is a green check mark, right? So it's testing that new instance. It knows what, uh, it knows it has availability to it. It was able to do its data, initial data uh, collection. When I hit apply, it's not gonna be added to the, to the list. So you'll see here, it says initializing. It'll take a minute or so for it to do its initial data gathering. So it's looking at, you know, what OS is it? You know, what version of SQL, how many processors, CPU, uh, counting up the databases, pulling in the general information about the SQL server so that when we click on it, we we'll actually have data to work with. So manually adding instances to the environment is relatively simple. Um, once it's been added, you can always go in here and tweak it a little bit. So maybe all of our servers or most of our servers, we want to monitor at that six minute polling interval, but this one's a little bit different. We want to drop that down to two. Maybe we've decided that we want to put this in a couple different tags that we didn't do initially. Um, you can also go in and do things like initialize uh, VMware monitoring. So um, if you aren't familiar with that, Diagnostic Maker does have the ability to measure certain VMware or Hyper-V specific metrics coming from, in, in the case of VMware, from vCenter. So if you wanted to go that next level, it's pretty simple. You would say new. And what this is talking about is, in, in this case, if we're talking about VMware, where is vCenter? So you'd put in either the IP or the fully cloud fed domain to, to vCenter. You can name it whatever you want. And then you need a read account. So you don't need to be administrator. Once that's done, it'll let you link that. So you'll hit link down below and you'll start getting data back. So it's a relatively simple process, but it gives you that extra bit of information that help you understand performance a little bit more. So manually adding instances is relatively simple through the, the GUI. You also though have the ability through PowerShell to not only add instances with the uh, PowerShell command, new SQL Server DM monitored instance right here. So it's a relatively simple syntax, you know, what instance you want to monitor, what authentication type, you can put in tags, you know, there's some good examples in here you can work from. So you certainly have the ability to add an instance quickly, but you can also do other things with, with PowerShell, right? So you can add different drives if you had to mainly, uh, mainly supply mount points, um, you can add DM users, you can grant permissions, application security, um, you can customize your monitoring with PowerShell as well. So you can add instance names, friendly names, uh, tagging, remove tags, schedule maintenance mode. There's a lot of really interesting uh, uh, options available to you via PowerShell. So if you're one of those customers that, you know, maybe you're monitoring 200 instances from the get go, but you keep adding new SQL servers to your environment every week, every month, part of your deployment scripting for SQL could include PowerShell commandlets for diagnostic Manager so that once that instance is automatically created in your enterprise, it's automatically added to Diagnostic Manager at the same time. So I hope this was useful for you guys today. Obviously, if you have more questions, get in contact with us um, through your account managers and, and thank you for your time.